I recently created a video on how to backup your Home Assistant instance using Google Drive Backup. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to restore that backup from Google Drive, and I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4 with an SD card for this restore. There are some caveats to using something like an SSD externally, uh, which you would just do the restore to the SSD instead of the SD card. But the processes are similar for the various types of setups and installs. So I'll just show you the one that I have today. All right, let's get started. The type of restore you want to do really depends on what situation you're in. There's really two different types of situations. There's a restore situation in which you have a failed drive and you've got to restore everything from a backup, an off-site or off-device backup. The other option is if you have some configurations, changes that you made you don't like, or you have something that messed up, but you still can get into your a Home Assistant instance. I'm going to start with the easy one first, and that's going to be our Home Assistant instance is up and running. And you can see that it's doing here. Now, this is my development or my test device, so it doesn't have a lot of the cool stuff that I have on my main dashboard. So for a restore, we can go back over to our backups, and I've added Google Backups as a side, or to show on the sidebar. That's why you can see it over here. So I'll click on Backups. So on this site, you can see that I have four different backups. Two of them are backed up to the Google Drive, which says Backup here. One of them is on Google Drive only, or actually both of these are on Google Drive only. I'm gonna take one that's on my local device here, and that's this latest backup, 623. And I'm gonna click on um, restore here. Now what it's gonna tell me is that backups must be restored through the supervisor backups page. You can go to settings, system backups from the home, a home assistant web UI, or clicking this button right here where I can uh, get to it directly. So I'm gonna go there first. And you'll see these backups here. So as I said before, you have two backups on your drive locally. I'm gonna click on this one right here and I'm gonna click on restore. Now there's two options for restoring. You can do a partial restore and only choose the things you wanna restore here or you can do a full restore. Now it's, it's kind of a misnomer because it says full backup, partial backup, but really what you're selecting is, do you wanna restore from the full backup or do you want to restore from a partial backup? and you can choose what you want. I'm gonna do the full backup and I'm gonna click on restore. And then ask if you wanna wipe your system and restore this backup. I will click on restore. And now this thing will go through and wipe the system and restore. It's gonna take a little bit of, of time depending on uh, how big your system is and how big the restore image is gonna be. So we'll let that run for a little bit and we'll come back when it is completed. Okay, so you might get a little bit worried because we've waited quite a long time for the restore to happen. And it seems like nothing is going on. Well, it is. And if you have a Pi, you can actually look at the little green LED in there and see the drive light flashing or flickering. Um, but you can see now things are starting to, to uh, fire back up here. Things are getting reconnected and it's restarting all of the services. So now it says Home Assistant has started. I'd give it a couple more minutes before you started messing around with it, just to make sure everything gets settled in. Because as you can see here, there's still some things that aren't quite on the UI yet, so it's still finishing up its full startup. Now again, that is the simplest, easiest way to do a restore from Home Assistant if you have a working system that gets you to the backup page. If uh, something broke to the point where you couldn't restore it, from here, or the SD card crashed, which happens. Uh, unfortunately, SD cards don't last as long as we would like them to. You're gonna need another option to do that. So what I'm gonna do is, you can see this screen here, I'm going to simulate that I've had an SD card failure. I'm gonna start from the point at which I have no setup anymore. So the first thing to do is, we're gonna find our Home Assistant installation method. And we're gonna to go to the Home Assistant website and there's a bunch of different options here for installing things. And what we're gonna need is we're gonna need an image to reinstall on our Home Assistant SD card. I'm using the Raspberry Pi, as I mentioned. And so I have a Raspberry Pi 4. And if you come down here to step four, you wanna get the URL for your Raspberry Pi. And there is the 64-bit version for Pi 4, the 32, uh, bit version and then for Pi 3 also 64 and 32 bit. I have a Pi 4 so I'm going to get the 64 bit version. There's a copy button right here. You can click on that. Now what I would recommend you do is you open up a browser tab 
and you paste in the link to that, click on it, and then it'll download it to your local drive. I've had people tell me that when you use Belena Etcher, which is what I'm about to use, and paste in the URL instead of a file, it takes much longer. I don't know if that's true or why it does that, but I will just download it here directly myself and use that image. But now that we have that uh, image downloaded, we need to go ahead and we need to fire up Belena Etcher. Belena Etcher is a tool that I use to write my SD cards. Now, like I said, you can flash from file or flash from URL. If you click flash from URL, it's gonna have you put something in and you can actually see some recent ones I've done before. I'm gonna go from a file because somebody told me that was faster. Before you do anything, you need to make sure you have an SD card installed in your computer or plugged into your USB port on your computer. I've already got my SD card inserted, so I'm gonna flash from file. I'm gonna choose this image I just downloaded. I'm gonna select the target, which is the drive that has uh, the, S or the SD card drive. Make sure that you don't select anything but the SD card. If you select the wrong thing, you're gonna overwrite whatever's on it. So make sure you're very careful. I only have an option here, which is the uh, 64 gig um, SD card, and I'll use that. Select it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and flash. It'll go through the process of decompressing the image and then putting it on the SD card and then verifying. That will take a few minutes. We'll come back after that is complete. All right, so you can see that we're validating. We're almost through the validation process. Once the validating is done and it comes back good, then our image has been written and we're good to go. Okay, so flash is complete. You have one successful target. We can go ahead and close out of Belena Etcher. And I'm gonna pull the SD card out of my PC. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it into my Raspberry Pi here. It just goes in obviously in the same spot you probably took it out of whenever you had the failure. And we're gonna plug it in, give it some power here. And you'll see that this light right here will start to turn green. I can shade the, uh, it's hard to see, but you'll see some flashing of a green light in there in a minute. And that light, uh, there you go. You can barely see it, but you'll start to see that light flashing and it'll take a little bit of time for that to boot up. So nothing to see there. I'd give it a good 10 minutes or so to completely boot up and get everything uh, get everything set up. But this is just the, the boot up, getting the operating system going. And once you get to the point where the operating system is up and running on the device, then you will be able to go in and choose the restore media to put everything back to the way it was before. So this will take a little bit of time and we'll come back to this in just a little bit whenever it is ready to go. And that uh, solid green light there, you can barely see under the red light, it's flickering. As long as there's activity there on that activity light, it's doing its thing. If it goes for a very, very long time, I'd say 10 minutes without any activity going on, then there might be a problem with it. Again, we're just gonna let this sit here for a little bit and just make sure everything works as it is supposed to. One other thing you can do as well is you can take a look at your router and you can check to see the uptime on, if you have a, an uptime filter, you can look at your uptime on your router client list like I do on my Unify. And then as soon as it pops up on the screen, you'll know that it's got a network connection and it's ready to go. One other thing to note is I'm doing this plugged in to an ethernet cable. So I've got an ethernet cable on the ethernet port of the Pi. So it's gonna go directly into my network. I don't have to worry about any Wi-Fi stuff. If you have to do Wi-Fi stuff, you're gonna to have to go in there and add some Wi-Fi configuration information. And actually one thing you can actually be doing while you're waiting is you can go over to your Google Drive. You're gonna actually have to go to, dr to the drive where you're doing your uh, backups and you're gonna actually have to download that. So if we go over here to my Google Drive here, you'll see that I have the full backup. This is the one I used before directly on the device, but it's also here as well. I'm gonna click the little box here uh, actually, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to download a copy of this and it tells me it exceeds the maximum file size that it can be scanned. So make sure you're downloading something that's reputable. I'm going to download it anyway. And of course, it's going to show up here uh, as a full backup. Now it's on my local PC. You'll want it to be on your local PC in order to use it. So while you're waiting for the restore to happen, go ahead and download this backup so it's ready to go whenever the restore is ready for it. And again, we will see you here in just a few minutes.
after the uh, restore is, uh, or the operating system is installed on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so we're back now with Home Assistant uh, and it's preparing it right now. It says it can take up to 20 minutes. It doesn't always take that long. In fact, most of the time it takes less than that. One thing that I do notice in looking at this is the IP address that I assigned to it originally is not the same IP address that I had on it. I don't know why it changes the IP address. In fact, I've told my router to always give it the same IP address, especially because I'm running AdGuard on here and I want it to be a permanently fixed IP address so that I don't, uh, so my DNS stuff will work on my clients. It's picking 157, even though I've told my router to give it 158. So anyway, we'll let it sit here. If you don't see this come back, um, you definitely need to check your router. You could also go to homeassistant.local. It should advertise that. If your network is set up to be able to resolve host names like that, then you can get to it that way as well. But again, we're gonna wait a little bit longer for it to uh, finish doing the preparation and then we'll be able to go in and do a restore. Uh, some folks have said that you have to refresh this screen in order to have the, the next step show up. Sometimes it'll just refresh on its own. If you've given it quite a long time and nothing's happened, go ahead and hit, hit refresh on the browser. Otherwise, just leave it alone and let it do its thing. And while I'm talking, there we go. So now I have a thing saying create an account. You'll notice right away there's something missing here at the bottom. Uh, this is where I would go to restore a backup. And for some reason, when it does this step right here, it doesn't give you the option. It wants you to create an account. Well, I'm just gonna refresh my browser. And now I have alternative you, alternatively, you can restore from a previous backup. You wanna make sure this is down here at the bottom because this is what we're gonna use. You don't need to fill anything else out up here. So click on this right here, and it's gonna ask you to choose a backup file. And here's the full backup I downloaded a few minutes ago. I'm just gonna open that up. It's gonna put it in here for us. And again, you can do a partial or a full just like you did from the backup rest uh, restore screen a little bit ago on the first part of this video. I want the full backup because I want everything back on here. Right now, the Raspberry Pi has a, st a stock version or a stock install of Home Assistant with none of my configuration and I want it all to go back. So I'll click on restore and then this will take a while as well. This step might actually take longer than installing the OS on here. It really depends on your setup, the speed of your device, and how much stuff you're restoring back to Home Assistant. So we'll hang out for a little bit uh, and we'll come back. And let me just check that uh, light real quick. You should be able to see activity again on the green light there. It'll start doing a bunch of stuff because it's doing activity from the SD card and pulling stuff in. You'll see that activity going on as it does its business uh, if you have access to the device itself, which you should if you're um, doing a full restore because you're gonna need to get to the SD card. All right, let that play and we will come back here in about, um, I don't know, 15 minutes or so and we'll see what it looks like. Actually, it'll be a snap of the fingers for y'all. So if you've been waiting a good while, 10, 15, 20 minutes and nothing has happened on this screen, and if you have your Raspberry Pi where you can see the activity light and it looks like it's slowed down quite a bit, just go ahead and give your browser a refresh and see if anything happens. And you may need to make sure that you're running HTTPS or HTTP, depending on how you had the thing set up before and see if it shows anything else up. So let me try HTTPS, there we go. So this looks like my previous uh, install with the exception of the coloring, it, you, it was a a white background instead of a dark background. Also, the IP address is still 157. Now, I made a statement earlier that I set my router to automatically assign 158. Well, that wasn't true. I didn't actually have that set up correctly. So it does pull it from DHCP, and I guess it makes sense that it doesn't want to assign a static IP at the beginning. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into settings, into system, and then into network, and look at IPv4, and it's set to DHCP. Even after you do a restore, uh, if you have static set, apparently it doesn't store the static IP address. And um, it, this is what it pulled from DHCP, so I will change this. 
Now, when I change this IP address, it's going to make me change it in the browser. I'll lose contact in, uh, initially. So I'm saving it here now. And I'll come up to my browser and actually change the IP address that I'm going to in my browser. And now we are fully restored. Interestingly enough, and I, I guess this is based on maybe IP address or user agent, but for whatever reason, changing it to 158 from 157 actually restored my theme that I had set up as well. And let's just check notifications, login attempt failed 10 minutes ago, okay. So now we're fully restored. We can go through and we can look at different things on the dashboard and make sure everything is still here the way we left it before. And it looks like it is all here, including the backups. Where is that at? Uh, we'll have to go to add-ons for that. There's the backups there and then the web UI. Yep, so everything is still here set up the way we liked or we had it before and we're back up to a fully operational home assistant instance a couple things to keep in mind i did this on the sd card version of home assistant meaning that i'm running home assistant on an sd card i also run home assistant on the ssd external ssd and what you'll need to do with that is you'll need to restore like i did from uh, the image to the SSD versus the SD card. So instead of putting the SD card in your computer, you're gonna put the SSD card uh, into your SSD drive onto your computer and restore the Home Assistant in image onto that, boot onto that and do a full restore onto the drive itself. Um, so there's an option there to do that and different ways to do that as well. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Let me know um, on Discord as well if you have any questions. Uh, thank you for those that are subscribers to the channel and those that are members. If you're not a member, consider joining the channel uh, as well. That helps support what I do here. And again, thank you for watching and we will see you on the next video.